Okay, we, we want to bring in the audience. We've got our mic working. You were talking, sir. Can you yeah, hear? as I was trying to say, um, there's a huge gap between people in the communities and the government and some of us elites that could just comfortably Two sit down, right. you know, and, 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 dis and put these things on the table and discuss it the way we, we, we want to. You know, uh, my experience speaking with many other colleagues, you know, from different other African countries, mm -hmm. is that they keep looking forward, you know, to seeing Nigeria lead Africa out of, you know, this, this, this kind of, Somewhere. sorry to say, you know, unfortunate mess they are we're in. And I think it is high time we begin to look towards ourselves inwards and evolve as a country begin to look at so, what so we, you want us to hold ourselves to higher standards exactly basically. Okay. we need to begin to thank you very much anybody else um, in the audience there's um <coughs> is there another mic i'd like the okay okay sir but please be quick yes yeah dr mbama is the name um i feel nigeria has a very huge identity problem a what identity problem okay, very identity huge identity, identity problem okay and that's one of the fundamental problems in Nigeria. Some of us feel that Nigeria does not exist. Because when Nigeria exists in the heart, when you can identify yourself as a Nigerian, you'll be, cons you'll be bothered about the progress of Nigeria. People become Nigerians when they are holding political positions, when they have things to gain, mm -hmm. when they have achievements. This is a country where people don't invest here, instead they carry the weight of this nation out. And we're talking about nation building. First of all, we need to redefine Nigeria. The foundation is wrong, and the foundation must be corrected before we And in your forward. view, how do you correct the foundation? Yes, we need to define who we are. Do we really want to exist like Nigeria? If we want to exist in Nigeria, what is the interest which every person we have in the entity called Nigeria? Let me, let, let me come back to the member of the House of Reps because he's a sitting member of the House of Reps. We had the president talk about the fact that if there are people who have, you know, fundamental issues with the way we're structured, there are constitutional ways and the National Assembly as the lawmakers, why have we not seen lawmakers take into account agitations by their constituency and actually table these issues in, in, in the House and in the Senate? Well, thank you very much. I don't think that's absolutely correct because I know that most of the time we have members who come up with motions speaking about agitations in their community, in, their con in the constituencies they represent. But the issue of a um, certain part of the country uh, asking to go, on, to go their own way, I think is something that is very important that we take our time to resolve. It's not something that, like what the president is trying to say, is that there are legal means, there are constitutional means that we can talk about this. We what I, what I'm saying is, so for example, the, the, the South East, we've seen agitation by people from the South East. We haven't really heard senators from the South East, for example, table a motion either for a referendum or, or some sort of look at a way of seceding legitimately. And I'm saying, uh, is it that the National Assembly members are not listening to their constituencies? There's a procedure, or? There's a procedure to come up with that. There's a procedure to follow uh, okay. if you want to get that done. Let me bring one more comment, because we have, you will be surprised at how quickly time goes. So yeah. let's, yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Yusuf Musa. I'm a journalist, first by calling and a lawyer. I prefer calling myself a rural journalist, uh, because I work highlighting the real Nigerian, uh, what I call the real Nigerian. Uh, my problem is uh, I see Nigeria as a beautiful country on the right track. The people like us, like Madam, seems to be in a hurry. We should slow down. You don't build a nation in a hurry. You don't build any nation. America emerged under the ashes of bloody civil war. We're all aware of this. Up to today, the Scottish, the Welsh, and even the Irish are battling for self-identity and recognition in Great Britain. What are we saying, seeing in the, in, in, in the Basque region of Spanish territory? It's the same agitation. 
So we, 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 we will not take Nigeria as an isolated nation. We have our problems. How do we solve the problems? Not to attack leaders, not to attack the people, but attack, highlight the problems. And let's draw attention to these problems. Okay. All right. Let me, Reverend, let me come back to you quickly. There's something that he said there that um, triggered something in my head. In many places where nations have been built, often they have been built on the ashes of sometimes ethnic identities, actually, um, sometimes genocide. Um, in America, for example, Native Americans. Um, in places like Australia, Aborigines. Is this... A, a necessary ingredient? Do Nigerians have to subsume their ethnic identities in order to build a Nigeria that everybody can see as a citizen? Or is there a way to do this and make it a win-win where we are Nigerians but we are also, you know, faithful to our local identities? Well, let me just say this quickly. I think I agree with a lot of what he has said. First of all, we don't need to do evil to produce a great nation. Nigerians are a great people. The tribes are great people. We have great potential. Even our leaders are not at fault. I'm just going to try and say something within the next two minutes to capture what I believe okay, is. Okay, I have one minute. What, what is there? So. Now, <laughs> I have in my hand here something we used to play around with in the, in the 70s. It's called the Rubik's Cube. Normally, all the colors are on uh -huh. one side. Once you distort the harmony of this Rubik's Cube, you give it to a man, he will solve it all his life, he can't. He gives it to his son for seven generations. They cannot do it. You know why? Because it was designed as a toy that you must fail to solve. However, if you take a person of average intelligence and teach them what we call algorithms, five algorithms, what a family could not do in seven generations, a person will do in seven minutes. That is not only Nigeria, but also the story of Africa.